This mission is a follow-on to mission M02, Taxi, Take Off and Climb, where we will jump in time to the moment we return, back to the H3 airbase. You will learn on the Mirage F1CE, how to navigate towards our destination using its Tarkin navigation device, and then perform the following tasks. Descent. Landing. Taxi to ramp, optional. Shutdown, optional. This training series is set on the Syria map, and the approximate mission time is 25 to 35 minutes. Press spacebar to begin. You can adjust the sound volume produced by the background air traffic, by moving the in cockpit sound slider on the DCS options, audios, we have the mission paused to have time to explain the Tarkin configuration. We have set up a portable Tarkin station at the H3 airbase, which will allow you to find the destination and navigate towards it. First, set the Tarkin mode dial to transmit receive, TR, as this mode provides both bearing and distance to the station. It's Next, let's test our Tarkin receiver by press and holding its T button. If the test is successful, both the red and green lights will flash. Good, now use the highlighted knobs to select channel 32 X-ray, which is the channel that the Tarkin station at H3 is using. Once the Tarkin begins to receive the station signal, it will illuminate its green light and the Morse identification of the station should be heard, on this mission the station ID is TH3. You can adjust the Tarkin audio volume using the TAC knob on the audio panel. The navigation indicator is the instrument where the Tarkin will display its navigation information. For that you have to select either navigation mode VT, VOR and Tarkin, or TT, radar and Tarkin. For this mission, set it to TT. The navigation indicator can be tested by press and holding its test button T. If the test is successful, the Tarkin bearing arrow should align with the green mark at 45 degrees, and the distance window should display 250 nautical miles. Since on our destination airbase we will land on runway 29, we can check on the F-10 map that this runway has a true heading of 292 degrees. The navigation system of the Mirage F-1 uses only magnetic headings, so we need to convert it to magnetic by adding plus 5 degrees for the Syria map, giving us a magnetic heading of 297 degrees for this runway. Set a desired magnetic heading of 297 degrees, using the highlighted knob. Note how the desired heading arrowhead on the navigation indicator moves accordingly. Press spacebar once you have set the correct desired heading. At this point, the Tarkin bearing arrow is pointing directly towards the Tarkin station at our destination airbase, but it would be preferable if instead it pointed towards the initial approach point for the landing, which is a point about 10 to 12 nautical miles away from the runway and aligned with it, as shown on the diagram. Fortunately, the navigation indicator has an option that allows just that, called vector mode. It allows you to specify a navigation point relative to the Tarkin station location, by specifying a, magnetic, bearing and distance from it. So, for this approach we will specify a point on bearing 297 minus 180, equal to 117 degrees and set at 15 nautical miles of distance, so that we may have a bit longer approach to allow more time for the training instructions. The highlighted outer ring, allows you to control if the inner knob inputs vector distance or bearing. Using both, enter 015 for the distance counter, and 117 for the bearing. Press spacebar once the counters have the correct values. Good, now use the highlighted switch to select vector mode. Note that the Tarkin bearing arrow is now pointing to a different location than before, as it now points towards the initial approach point for our landing. We are now ready to resume our flight, press spacebar to unpause the mission. Use trim to level the aircraft, and adjust your throttle to maintain a speed of 400 knots indicated airspeed. You will now have to turn the aircraft to the right, towards the direction pointed by the Tarkin bearing on the navigation indicator. Strive to keep your altitude constant during the turn.
Good, you are now heading towards the initial approach point. Level the aircraft and head it in such a way that the Tarkin bearing arrow on the navigation indicator is pointing straight up, towards the heading index. We will now contact air traffic control, to report that we are inbound. The green radio should be already on, set to the VHF frequency of ATC, and the green knob should be pushed in, on the audio panel. Press the backslash key to bring up the DCS communications menu. Good, now select, F5, ATC, F1, H3. F1, inbound. Inbound. ATC should respond with the instructions to fly an approach towards its active runway, which should be runway 29. Press spacebar once ATC has responded, and press F12 to clear the communications menu. The destination airbase is at 2,500 feet above sea level. A standard landing approach descends 300 feet for every nautical mile of distance. As our initial approach point is at 15 nautical miles from the runway, you should reach that point at about 2,500 plus 15 by 300 feet, equal to 7,000 feet. You should now begin a shallow descent, so that you arrive at the initial approach point at an altitude of 7,000 feet. Use the following parameters for the descent. Reduce throttle to 7,500 RPM, indicated airspeed of 350 knots. Even though it has no effect on DCS, set the D-mist switch to on, to keep the windshield from fogging. The low fuel warning light, Neve, has illuminated, meaning that we have less than 250 liters of fuel remaining, but that's okay as we are very near our destination airbase. The distance counter on the navigation indicator show that you are almost at the initial approach point. Flick the highlighted switch to normal, to select the Tarkin station at the airbase as destination. Good, the Tarkin bearing is now pointing towards the airbase. Note that the desired heading marker is almost at the same point, meaning that we are on the correct runway heading. 
now make a hard turn to the right, until the Tarkan bearing pointer is aligned with the top heading index of the navigation indicator. Try to keep a 7,000 feet altitude during the turn. Good, you are now almost on the correct approach path, the airbase should be visible. Maneuver to align the aircraft with the runway. Reduce speed to 250 knots indicated, throttle at 6,500 RPM, extend air brakes if required. Set the HUD to approach mode, by right-clicking on the highlighted switch. Good, next reduce the gun reticle brightness, to declutter the HUD. Wheel brakes test. Successively press and release each toe pedal. The frame light should lit on each press. Release the landing gear safety lever, in anticipation of deploying the landing gear. At 240 knots, retract the air brakes if still deployed. If ATC contacts you to clear for landing, open the communications menu and press F1, request landing. At 215 knots, deploy full flaps. Now, deploy the landing gear and confirm it locks, with three green lights. Turn on the landing light, by right-clicking on its switch twice. At 160 knots, increase RPM to 7300 and trim the aircraft to attain a 10 degree incidence, its indicator should be green. You may want to raise your seat, to improve visibility at high incidence angles. Maintain 150 knots until final approach, RPM at 7300 incident at 10 degrees. Place the HUD's orange dot, the velocity vector, over the runway threshold and keep it there. On finals, do not reduce RPM below 7000, to maintain good engine response. Velocity vector on runway threshold, the angle of attack should be between 9 to 11 degrees, RPM should be 7300. When reaching the overrun, pull out of glide slope to flare, by increasing the angle of attack from 10 to about 13 degrees. Reduce engine RPM to 7000 just before touchdown. Touchdown, fully close the throttle. Brake shoot. Deploy immediately after touchdown, bringing its control lever fully aft. Apply wheel brakes to help reduce the aircraft speed. The nose wheel steering system is available as soon as the nose wheel touches the ground. Depress its button to enable high sensitivity mode. Drop the brake chute while rolling straight, on the edge of the runway, by pushing its lever fully forward. Good, the brake chute has been released. It will be picked up by ground crew. Take the first available exit to the right, to taxi towards the ramp, as shown on the diagram.
the taxi to ramp and aircraft shutdown are optional, please select. Press spacebar to end the mission at this point. Press backspace if you want to continue the taxi towards the ramp. Good, you have to taxi towards the same spot from which you started on the previous mission, M02 taxi, take off and climb. On the next intersection, turn the aircraft to the right. On the left console, landing light, set to its middle position, taxi, slats and flaps, retract by moving the highlighted lever full forward, high lift devices switch, turn off. On the right console, demist switch, set to off. IFF, set to off. VOR, turn to off. Tarkin, set to off. Radar, set to standby. Pito heat, turn off. Radar warning receiver, turn off. Warning horn switch, turn off. Good, this completes the runway clearing procedure. Continue the taxi towards the ramp. On the next intersection, turn to the left and proceed straight to the ramp. You are now almost at your ramp spot, your ground crew is waiting for you. Upon entering the ramp, turn sharply to the right and then to the left, to park the aircraft on the proper spot, as shown on the figure. Good, you are now parked at the correct spot and heading. The aircraft shutdown is optional, please select. Press spacebar to end the mission at this point. Press backspace if you want to perform the aircraft shutdown.
Parking brake. Pull its handle to set the brake. With idle RPM stabilized, perform the following steps. Air conditioning, turn off. Armament control panel, push buttons released. Gyroscope reference system, set to off. Emergency gyromagnetic compass, turn off. Radar. Set to off. Sight. Turn off. Searchlight, turn off. EL pump, turn off. Standby horizon. Turn to off. Navigation indicator. Set to off. Standby horizon. Caged. Undercarriage control lever safety, in place. Throttle. Move to its stop position, by first moving it back to its minimum position, and then either click on the highlighted switch, or press the, I key. Wait for the engine to stop rotating. Low pressure fuel pumps, all three. Set to off. Battery and night lighting. Set all to off. Next, click on either handle to fully open the canopy. Congratulations, you have completed this training mission by landing your aircraft, taxing to ramp and performing a proper shutdown. Well done. Press spacebar to exit the mission.